Hi, my name is Alex and I'm a second year medical student from Devon. I'm here to answer some of your questions about what it's like to study at Teddy Hall today. Oxford Medicine is a six year degree, which is split into two halves of three years each. Um, the first three years are the pre-clinical school, where you learn all of the science which underlies medicine. Um, so for example, you learn anatomy, neuroscience, all about how your immune system works, etc. And then in your third year of the preclinical years, you get the opportunity to do a research project in a topic of your choice. You can do anything. Um, I'm going to be studying a new drug um, that has the potential to be used in hospital, but you can also research like how a disease works. You can do anything from literally looking at cells under a microscope to like broader data analysis and that kind of thing. Then in the last three years, you go into the clinical school where you would get a chance to apply all of this science in a hospital setting, working with real patients. Teddy Hall is particularly fantastic for medicine. We're lucky enough to have Professor Robert Wilkins as our head tutor, who's a brilliant physiologist and teaches everything in an incredible level of detail. We also have a really cohesive medical sciences society where students studying biomedical sciences and medicine come together for events once a term. We also all share notes and learning experiences throughout the degree, which makes it a lot easier to integrate into the college and medical school life. The best part of my personal statement, I feel, was the way that I linked everything that I did in preparation for university together to tell a kind of story about how I came to the decision to apply for medicine. I started out with the first book that I read that got me interested in studying medicine, and from there, I moved on to how I found work experience and what books I went on to read as a consequence of that. My personal statement was about 90% academic, so that includes um, what we call supracurricular study, which is studying above and beyond what you've studied at A-level. And this is particularly important for medicine because it's not a subject you would have studied before, so it's really important that you get an understanding of what you're going to be studying at degree level and you know what you're going into for six years. Um, these are the three books that I put in my personal statement and I would say it's really important to read um, around your subject and you don't have to read books like this. You can also listen to podcasts, you can take courses on FutureLearn, you can watch YouTube videos and all of those kinds of things as long as you're learning above and beyond your A-level curriculum. In order to apply for medicine at Oxford, you have to sit the BMAT or the Biomedical Aptitude Test. This test can be quite difficult as it's such a mixture of things. It consists of two multiple choice papers followed by an essay paper. And one of the multiple choice papers is critical thinking. One of them is general science understanding. And then the essay can be on anything. So sometimes it's like an aspect of medicine. And then sometimes one of the options is also like a philosophy question. And this is quite challenging because it's such a broad mix of things. You've got science, you've got critical thinking, which is probably going to be new to you. And then you've got essay writing, which if you're applying for a scientific subject, you may not have done much of before. I, found, I certainly found it challenging. The way that I prepared for this test was doing plenty of past papers, which are all available online. I also used my GCSE notes and the syllabus for the BMAT for the science component, because it does actually have a content requirement, unlike a lot of the admissions tests. It's not difficult science, um, but you do need to make sure that you've got kind of a breadth of understanding across biology, chemistry, physics and maths in order to answer the science paper. I also watched a couple of YouTube videos by somebody called Ali Abdal, who is a Cambridge Medicine graduate, and he's got lots of content on his channel on how to prepare for the BMAT further. I just followed his instructions and did what he said to do. For the essay component, again, the main thing is practice and you've got to be aware that you have limited space to write the essay. So I would say for the essay paper, the best thing to do is to print off a sample sheet of paper like the one they're going to give you in the exam because they won't give you any more paper and practice writing them in that space. And then you'll gradually get better at being more concise. All medicine interviewees have two interviews at one college and two interviews at another college in two days. Um, so I had two interviews at Teddy Hall and two interviews at Trinity College the next day and I stayed the night at Teddy Hall where they provided me with everything I needed, amazing food and everything. My first interview I really didn't enjoy. Um, I really struggled to answer the questions that they were asking me and I didn't really didn't know what to expect so I was really really nervous when I was in that interview. 
um, I was being asked to design a study for a, like a particular um, research problem and I really struggled with the concepts they were trying to push me to understand. Um, so I came out of that interview and I felt really upset. But after I got used to doing the interviews, which you do over doing all four of them over the two days, I really began to enjoy them. And my last three interviews, I have really fond memories of. I really enjoyed the conversations with the tutors. I learned a lot from them. In fact, I learned stuff that I'm still applying as part of my degree now. Despite enjoying the last three of my interviews, I did have one really awkward moment in one of them where I was being asked about blood pressure and the tutor said to me, what would be a good way to bring somebody's blood pressure down? And I said, oh, well, if you bring the volume of blood in the body down, then that would reduce the blood pressure, right? Which makes sense. Um, and then he said, okay, how do you think that's possible? And I just blurted out before I could stop myself, you'd use leeches and that's obviously a ridiculous answer. And he looked at me and said, <laughs> I don't think that's really accepted medical practice anymore um, and laughed about it. But don't be afraid to speak your mind in the interviews because they're looking to understand your thought process rather than the actual end answer that you come to. If you're thinking in the right direction, that makes you a teachable student and that makes you a good fit for the tutorial system. So although I said a ridiculous answer because I based it off the principles that were correct in that situation, that's better than saying nothing at all if you don't know the answer, for example. The first thing I did was started planning my A-level revision and I just focused on my A-level revision until A-levels were over because I knew that I needed to make the grades in order to get in and that although I'd got an offer, that's obviously not a guaranteed place until you've met the offer. So that was the first thing I did. And then after my A-levels were over, I started to actually prepare for starting at university. Um, so when my offer was confirmed on A-level results day, I got sent a reading list by the medical school. And this reading list is really, really long and it's full of like really big textbooks that you first of all won't own, don't need to buy. Um, and won't have time to read. So I took from that reading list a couple of the pop science books, um, kind of like things you can find in book sh bookshops or in your local library, um, and read those instead and just picked the ones that I thought I would enjoy. So these are some of the ones that were on the reading list. Um, and the main thing is to just enjoy them because they're not expecting you to start the degree knowing all of the content on the syllabus at all. It's a completely different ball game to A-levels. They just want you to start in the mindset to learn about medicine. Um, I was also sent work by my college tutor, just a small piece of work to complete. Um, and for that, I used one of the, I did use one of the books which was on the reading list, um, which I'd recommend to anybody who's an offer holder for medicine to get because this is, as, as you can see, I've used it a lot in the time I've been in the preclinical school. Um, one other thing I did was spoke to current students that were at um, Teddy Hall studying medicine. So I got a, an email explaining who my college parents were going to be. And college parents are students in the year above you, um, one of who does, your, who does your subject and the other one does your college sibling subject. So there'll be another person in your year that's in your family. And this is a really great way to get to know some people at your college before you start, get to know what you need to bring for Freshers' Week and everything. So I emailed my college mum and started chatting to her about what I might need to do to prepare, how to go about doing the prep work and everything, um, which was a really great thing to do to prepare. But I think the main thing to say is just relax before you start your degree. Then, like I said before, they're not expecting you to know everything when you start. And the main thing is to start with a fresh mindset, ready to learn and not tired out by trying to read all of the textbooks on the reading list. In my opinion, Teddy Hall is the best college in general, but also for medicine specifically. And I'm sure that students at other colleges would disagree because whichever college you end up studying at, you always love it and feel like it's the best one for you. But there are some reasons why I think Teddy Hall is particularly fantastic and that's the medicine community which I mentioned earlier. It's so inclusive, everybody talks to everybody, exchanges ideas, 
some of the older years have even given us tutorials and things that we struggled with in first year, which was a really useful experience. And I know that some colleges don't have that. They help us think about like what research projects to do in our third year based on what our interests are and what their experiences were of it and all of that kind of thing, which makes studying medicine at Teddy a really communi community orientated experience and helps you find the right footing almost immediately. The community in general at Teddy Hall is also really fantastic. When you start there, you already feel like you've been there your whole life. Everybody's so friendly and like eager to um, get to know you. The whole JCR community is really inclusive and you'll suddenly find that you know your whole year within about probably about four weeks of starting because the college site is so small um, and everybody has meals together and is kind of living on top of each other. So it's a really great way to quickly get to know all of your friends. Teddy also has an incredible extracurricular theme. We have everything from a non-auditioning choir and a music society to hundreds of different sports clubs. And if there isn't one, then you can start one. So for example, someone started an ultimate frisbee society this year. And in my first year, a group of people revived the drama society, which hadn't been around for a while. I think the inclusivity of Teddy's extracurricular scene is one of the best things about it. I joined the choir in first year with no formal singing experience before, and I managed to audition for an award by the end of the first term, um, which got me free singing lessons, and it was an absolutely fantastic experience. Then in second year, I joined the Drama Society, having never acted on stage before. I think the last time before then I was on stage was in a school production of The Lion King, and I was one of the extra lions in the background that didn't even have any speaking. Um, but despite that, they took me in and cast me as one of the roles in their play and taught me to act, and it was a really fantastic experience. And all of the clubs at Teddy are like that. Um, they will accept you no matter what you like what your experience of that thing in the past has been, um, which is one of the best things about it. I think the main thing to remember when you're applying to medicine is it's very easy to get caught up in trying to get this amazing work experience placement or that incredible lab work experience or trying to get onto internships and, and hundreds of things. And really it's not the quantity of stuff that you've done but it's the quality of it so it doesn't matter if you've done one volunteering placement at a nursing home as long as you've learned a lot from it and you're able to talk about that um, and that's much more valuable than doing hundreds and hundreds of different things but not really stopping to think about them and that's one of the things that I think it's particularly important to remember. If you have any questions other than the ones I've answered for you here today, please leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you with a response as soon as is possible. Thank you for watching.